Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you real quick how to change the 12 volt battery in a BMW i3. Uh, this is one of those necessary uh, wear items that I guess uh, just kind of goes out after four years or so. So anyway, um, what you're going to need is to get the battery first of all and it seems like they're only selling them through the dealership or with like a three week wait from other websites. Uh, it's a DECA uh, or East Pen AUX18L is the battery you're going to need. It's a sealed battery and uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get to so I'm just going to do a quick video on what you need to do this job. So here are the items as to what you're going to need. All right, now once you got all that stuff, let's uh, get started. First thing first, pop the hood or the front trunk, whatever. And then once you do that, take these panels off. They just kind of come off. They're like Velcroed on. Next, what we want to do is remove this bucket. What you're going to need is a um, four millimeter Allen wrench for these screws. You got one there and one there. You got four of those total, and then a T twenty seven Torx bit for these two here in the bottom. Okay, once you get the bucket out, you can see the battery way back in there. But first, we need to unplug this, which will disconnect the main high voltage system. Yours may be orange, mine for some reason is green. Okay, so this part may be a tad confusing. Uh, you pull, you pull this little red tab up. Okay, you just kind of grab it, pull it out, and once you can see the holes here, which actually is for a lock to go through, you can just put a screw or something there in the meantime. Keep it up, it means it's disconnected. Okay. Now we're going to head towards the battery. What we're going to need for this is a 10 millimeter socket wrench and an extension so that we can get back there and get that. I actually found this sort of rig much more useful. A wiggly <laughs> thing for my 10 millimeter. A lot faster, a lot easier than, than using the freaking ratchet. Okay, once you got both the bolts out, just going to remove this super annoying bracket. All right, next up, we need a 10 millimeter socket to move the negative terminal. So getting to the positive terminal is a total bitch. Thankfully, in order to see this bolt, you can actually fold this part of the battery terminal back and then you can see the uh, long, bolt, long bolt there. Anyway, they don't need to come undone all the way. They just need to be loose enough to take off. And then hopefully I can get this stupid battery wiggled out of here and then we're going to remove the terminals. Yes, and also I need to wiggle off this little white uh, drain hose. Make sure you point the little nipple on there up. It's a drain hose for God knows what reason. A sealed battery, but anyway. Alright, once you wiggle it through all these stupid wires and whatnot, it should be pretty easy to take out. Keep that drain up. And then uh, we're going to use our T30, I believe. We're going to keep these terminals, very important. Actually, uh, T27s do appear to work on these. You just unscrew them. Okay, now that uh, we got the other battery ready to go, we're going to reattach the terminals, doing the negative one first. So you see there's a little plus sign here for the positive one. This is how it goes. It's the only way it can go on. Same here. You see the little negative sign. And uh, these just screw right back on with the T27 Torx. When you put the battery back in, you can see it kind of snugly fits right in there along the uh, holder there. Attach the negative terminal, put it back on the post, and then tighten it up with a 10 millimeter bolt. Same with the positive terminal, it just kind of slips on there. It's actually not too difficult. At this point, it's also a good idea to just retest the drain hose. It's a press fit, so not too difficult to do. You just put it back in. Okay, the last thing you need to do here is obviously reinstall the bracket with the 10 millimeter uh, sockets on it. Get those nice and tight, and uh, then when you're done with that, we can move on to 
uh, restoring the high voltage system power. Okay, now here's a tricky part. Getting this stupid thing back working. Um, apparently what you're supposed to do is put the screwdriver in this hole here to open up that thing. And then simultaneously push backwards and down. Good lord, that was a pain in the ass to get back in. I had to jam this uh, thing all the way the heck out. Make sure you got this red thing all the way up. And I don't know if like plastic was too warm or what, but I had to wait for it to cool off. And once I did, it eventually slid back together. But oh my god, what a pain in the butt. It took me 20 minutes to figure that out. So anyway, just thought I'd give you my tips so you can save some time. Next up, we're going to put the frunk bucket back in. And we got our uh, two Torx 27 screws and our 4 millimeter hex heads, uh, four of those that go here. We'll just pop that in and uh, be close to done. Okay, now that uh, the bucket's back on, you just uh, literally Velcro <laughs> these, uh, you kind of clip them in. There's two clips up top there. Put them in, Velcro them down, and one clip there, one clip there. Fascinating stuff. We got our four push points here. Boom. Done. Okay, let's uh, see if this fixes the issue. says is charging door open so I'm gonna try to charge this up it's got 14 miles left and uh, we'll see what happens well, plugged her in it seems to be charging okay so that is a good sign